We're still dealing with limits at infinity and they want us to take the limit as x goes to positive infinity and as x goes to negative infinity. And if we remember when we're dealing with a rational function, the easiest thing for us to do is to look at the model. Now remember, the model is what's in control of everything, it's control of the world. And if I look at the model, the model is the quotient of the two highest powers. So the terms with the highest powers. So it's negative 2x cubed divided by x. And so it's going to be negative 2x squared. That says as x is very, very large, negative 2x squared is what's going to be in control at what happens in the end. That's called the arrows or end behavior. So now I'm going to look at the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 2x squared, and which means that I'm looking at negative 2 times infinity squared. Which is negative 2, infinity squared is just infinity. And negative 2 times infinity is what? negative infinity. So we can say that the limit as, as x goes to infinity of, and I need to clean that up a little bit, of negative 2x squared, negative 2x squared goes to, and we normally just say equal, negative infinity. As whatever is happening, it's going down. So the arrow is pointing downward. And then if I look at the limit as x goes to negative infinity of negative 2x squared, this is negative 2 times negative infinity squared, which is negative 2 times, what's negative infinity squared? infinity and negative 2 times infinity is negative infinity so it says this goes also going down so whatever is happening on either side the arrows are pointing downward and there's something going on in the middle don't know what but at least the arrows are going down so we can say that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x in this case is negative infinity. So it's bottom, bottom. So the next move is going to be to a graph. And it says use the graph to determine the limit as x goes to positive and negative infinity. Now remember, it's the puppet thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ride on the graph. I'm going to see where it ends up. It's like being on a surfboard and catching the wave, right? You're going to ride along to see what happens. And if I'm going to take a look at as x goes to infinity, I'm riding along, riding along, riding along, and it looks like it almost levels off. And it levels off where? At y equals 2. So we're going to say that the limit as x goes to infinity of this graph of f of x is 2. It's a horizontal asymptote. So that says I have an HA because it's a number. If I were plus or minus infinity, that just says it's going to be increasing or decreasing without bounds. So it says the arrow is going up 
or the arrow is going down. When I'm going to a number that says that's a horizontal asymptote. Yes? We don't have to mention <coughs> the first problem you did, we don't have to mention the uh, asymptote that's there? No. They didn't ask me to anything about it. There is no, there is a vertical asymptote, but n no horizontal. So they didn't ask us to do anything with verticals. I don't think so. Wait, why are we starting at Did they? I don't know. Hmm? Why are we starting, or why do we use f of x equals 2? Because if I follow the graph, the f here is y equal 2. The graph is going to be riding along y equal 2. Mm -hmm. So as x goes to infinity, y is going to 2. And if I take a look now, I'm going to take the limit as x goes to negative infinity. And by the way, this is highly unusual. What, you're going to say, what's highly unusual? Well, if I ride the wave, and this is where x is going to negative infinity. So I'm going to ride the wave, so I'm going to ride the wave, and I notice y is going where? Negative, Negative 3. It's a second horizontal asymptote that's different from the first. That's highly unusual for brief calculus. Uh, for engineering calculus, not so much. Brief calculus, uh, yes. That you have a double, that you have more than one horizontal asymptote. That's highly unusual.